After another great live stream last night, I wanted to jump on and talk about uh, a topic that came up as part of a question and really just sort of a side note of the, the question itself. And it was really around what the difference between these two terms are, acclimation and acclimatization. So very short video today, just going through the differences, but it is a really key difference and something we need to look into specifically when we're talking about training in heat and preparing for heat, or if we're looking into altitude as well. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Nick here talking science of endurance and everything sports science in general. Thanks for everyone who's been following along, joining up to the channel uh, as a member. We've had a couple of members join, which has been fantastic. You can click the join button down below to get involved in that. Um, all the subscribers, thank you for all your support so far. And another great live stream last week uh, and this week as well with all of our subscribers in there asking questions, uh, getting their questions answered, joining in the conversation and learning a little bit along the way as well. And this video, this really short one that I'm gonna to do today is just uh, on the back of a little bit of a conversation, a discussion point we had from last night's live stream where we were talking about altitude um, and, and the benefits of altitude that, that sort of came up. It was brought up a, a, the, these places you can go to, we can put a mask on, uh, there's a tube hooked up and it's gonna simulate sort of altitude, altitude tense, all of these processes. And it really brought me down to the, the topic or, or discussion of acclimatization versus acclimation. And these two words that look very, very similar when they're written on a piece of paper and sound very similar, but that subtle change in, in term, acclimatization versus acclimation, does make a difference in terms of what is actually happening and the physiological response. And this can go for when we're talking about altitude. So when I talk about acclimatization, acclimatization is going into the environment and physically um, immersing yourself and getting uh, involved in it to then allow that physiological stimulus to occur. So this, from an altitude perspective, would be like going up and doing an altitude camp. Get up at high altitude, go into the mountains, um, wherever you need to go. Colorado, for example, is a, is a common place that a lot of football teams or Australian rules football teams have been in the past. Um, it, all throughout Europe, Colombia is a really good place uh, in terms of we know some of the Tour de France riders who were born in Colombia at really high altitude, obviously have some really great uh, aerobic physiological adaptations that occur as a, uh, as a, I guess, a byproduct of living there and growing up there. Acclimatization is being in that in that environment. From where, from a heat perspective, it's like going over to, to Kona, for example. If you're an Ironman athlete, you head over to Kona in Hawaii two months before, month and a half before, get really immersed within the environment and, and learn to, to manage the environment. And this is also, I guess, a process and something why it sort of sparked in my mind to then go and talk about it today is I've just come back uh, from, from my run late this afternoon, went in after dinner, it was still at 33 degrees Celsius at about sort of 7.30, 7.45. So um, definitely still really hot. But as we go through this transition in the summer, summer, summer months, where it goes from slightly, uh, slightly cooler temperatures over from the back end of winter into some warmer, and, and then hot temperatures as we get closer and closer to summer, it, it's the type of thing we constantly go through this gradual acclimatization process where our, obviously our climate is changing. Um, thing, things, are, things are different and we slowly get better and better. And that's why over the course of a summer, you start out, you get those first couple of days. And I mean, for me at the moment, my heart rate was 10, 15 beats higher than what it should have been in certain parts of my long run today mainly from the fact that the heat was just getting to me and, and that's going to be the, the case. But the more exposure I have in that environment and actually going out and just running in the heat, not actually going out middle of the day, but, but being smart about it and running in some higher temperatures, the better and better I get at, at tolerating that temperature, being able to keep myself cool. I'm going to have a little bit more blood plasma um, from a heat perspective to be able to then, um, and, and blood volume to be able to circulate a little bit more blood through the system, be, have a lot more fluid within the system, absorb a lot more fluid so then I can sweat more out and cool myself down. All of these positive adaptations as a byproduct of just spending lots of time in, in that environment and actually being there physically. If I went up to altitude, physically being at altitude is, is what we're looking at. The difference then to acclimation is acclimation is a simulated environment. That's getting you prepared for what it would be like. That's the best way I can describe it. It's what, it would, what would the environment be like? So from a altitude perspective, this is like your altitude tents or your altitude chambers, your altitude uh, apartments that, that they have these days in apartment buildings where you can go in, spend your, your 12 hours exposure from altitude perspective in a simulated environment, live in a, live in a space where you can convert uh, rooms in your house uh, to altitude chambers. You can get the little tents that you can sleep in. All of these, all of these things are simulated environments going to uh, uh, maybe a gym or something that, that has an altitude room or has a setup where you can hook the mask on um, that's got a tube coming out of it that's hooked up to uh, a gas chamber that is mixing in a whole bunch of extra nitrogen, hydrogen to drop the oxygen co concentration that you're actually breathing in. All of this is typically simulated uh, versions and it's giving you a preparation of what it's like. 
Now, the longer exposure, if you're going into something like an altitude tent or an altitude uh, house, those types of things where you're gonna be sleeping in there, spending 12 plus hours in there, are really good to get the actual stimulus we need that would be the same as going and actually being in the environment in, in terms of an altitude acclimatization aspect. From a going to a gym and doing a one hour session, that's gonna show you what it's like or get you that sensation of what it's like to be at altitude. It's not gonna provide the physiological benefit of increased red blood cell count as a result of naturally occurring APO and all the good stuff that comes with the having more, I guess, red blood cells in the system to be able to transport the oxygen we need around. So that's just gonna give you a taste for it. It's not gonna actually do anything, whereas spending lots, much larger periods of time sleeping in, in an altitude tent is going to do something and then going actually up, up to altitude is also gonna do something as well. We have a similar thing from a heat perspective, but the acclimation side of things from heat is much more effective. So when we talk about going in and doing a training session in the heat, maybe um, you're in a cool environment, for example, Southern Hemisphere, middle of winter, then you go and race in, in sort of September, October. In the Northern Hemisphere, it's, it's hot. You can do some acclimation training um, within your own home or maybe you get to a, a place that's got um, maybe a humidity chamber or a higher humidity chamber or can increase the temperature, crank the heaters on, etc. cetera. Um, I know people talk about putting jackets on and things like that, not really doing what we need. It's more an environmental thing that we, we want to try and simulate, not necessarily just making you feel hot and restricting how much you can cool yourself down. So doing all of that is going to have a bit more of an effect. So being in the heat and being immersed in that is going to cause you to adapt a little bit more. But having said that again, it's not the, not quite the same as then going and being in the environment. Um, there, there's some good protocols around saunas after sessions to be able to work in that acclimation to heat and give you a bit of that stress and that physiological stress on your, on your body. Post-session, doing your session in the normal conditions, then going and jumping in a sauna, getting that, that increase in blood volume to be able to, again, help regulate temperature a little bit better is going to help, but it's nowhere near as good as going over to the environment and actually being being in amongst it. So that's a very quick breakdown of the difference. Acclimatization is physically being there, immersing yourself in and having the physiological change as a result of being in where you're trying to change to, whether it be altitude or temperature or humidity, for example, the climate. Acclimation is a simulated environment to either elicit some of those responses if you've got long-term exposures in that simulated environment or to just give you a taste of what it's like. And even that taste of what it's like is gonna prepare you to some extent, but it's not necessarily gonna give you the physiological, enough of the physiological benefit as we would get in, in a more sustained exposure to that environment. So a bit of a quick summary there, great discussion point from the live stream we had this week. If you are keen on jumping in those, Melbourne time, Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. is when we're jumping on and doing our live Q&As. Jump in, ask your question about anything sports science, science of endurance related. We're getting some great discussion at the moment. Keep supporting the channel by commenting all of your questions on the videos, sharing them as well. Make sure you are subscribed uh, to the channel to keep up to date when new videos do come out. And if you are keen on uh, joining up as a member to support the channel above and beyond, hit that little join button down below. Go check out some of the perks. When we get to 10, the first 10 members, we're halfway there, we're at five at the moment. Once we get to the first 10, a new perk is gonna be dropped. So excited to uh, let you know on what that is gonna be once we do get there. But again, any support on the channel is great as always. Keep looking um, looking out for, for new content, new videos. Keep the comments and questions coming in. Love interacting and, and answering some of your questions and helping to educate you a little bit along the way. I'm going to leave it there. Nice short one for today. That is it and we'll see you in the next one.